The Swift Programming Language 5.6 Edition, book copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Access Control. Access Control restricts access to parts of your code from code in other source files and modules. This feature enables you to hide the implementation details of your code and to specify a preferred interface through which that code can be accessed and used. You can assign specific access levels to individual types, classes, structures, and enumerations, as well as to properties, methods, initializers, and subscripts belonging to those types. Protocols can be restricted to a certain context, as can global constants, variables, and functions. In addition to offering various levels of access control, Swift reduces the need to specify explicit access control levels by providing default access levels for typical scenarios. Indeed, if you are writing a single target app, you may not need to specify explicit access control levels at all. Note, the various aspects of your code that can have access control applied to them, properties, types, functions, and so on, are referred to as entities in the sections below for brevity. Modules and source files. Swift's access control model is based on the concept of modules and source files. A module is a single unit of code distribution, a framework or application that is built and shipped as a single unit and that can be imported by another module with Swift's import keyword. Each build target, such as an app bundle or framework in Xcode, is treated as a separate module in Swift. If you group together aspects of your app's code as a standalone framework, perhaps to encapsulate and reuse that code across multiple applications, then everything you define within that framework will be part of a separate module when it is imported and used within an app or when it is used within another framework. A source file is a single Swift source code file within a module, in effect, a single file within an app or framework. Although it is common to define individual types and separate source files, a single source file can contain definitions for multiple types, functions, and so on. Access levels. Swift provides five different access levels for entities within your code. These access levels are relative to the source file in which an entity is defined and also relative to the module that source file belongs to. Open access and public access enable entities to be used within any source file from their defining module and also in a source file from another module that imports the defining module. You typically use open or public access when specifying the public interface to a framework. The difference between open and public access is described below. Internal access enables entities to be used within any source file from their defining module, but not in any source file outside of that module. You typically use internal access when defining an app's or a framework's internal structure. File private access restricts the use of an entity to its own defining source file. Use file private access to hide the implementation details of a specific piece of functionality when those details are used within an entire file. Private access restricts the use of an entity to the enclosing declaration and to extensions of that declaration that are in the same file. Use private access to hide the implementation details of a specific piece of functionality when those details are used only within a single declaration. Open access is the highest, least restrictive, access level, and private access is the lowest, most restrictive access level. Open access applies only to classes and class members, and it differs from public access by allowing code outside the module to subclass and override, as discussed below in subclassing. Marking a class as open explicitly indicates that you've considered the impact of code from other modules using that class as a superclass, and that you've designed your class's code accordingly. Guiding Principle of Access Levels Access levels in Swift follow an overall guiding principle. No entity can be defined in terms of another entity that has a lower, more restrictive access level. For example, a public variable cannot be defined as having an internal, file private, or private type because the type might not be available everywhere that the public variable is used. A function cannot have a higher access level than its parameter types and return type because the function could be used in situations where its constituent types are unavailable to the surrounding code. The specific implications of this guiding principle for different aspects of the language are covered in detail below.
default access levels. All entities in your code, with a few specific exceptions as described later in this chapter, have a default access level of internal if you do not specify an explicit access level yourself. As a result, in many cases you do not need to specify an explicit access level in your code. Access levels for single target apps. When you write a simple single target app, the code in your app is typically self-contained within the app and does not need to be made available outside of the app's module. The default access level of internal already matches this requirement. Therefore, you do not need to specify a custom access level. You may, however, want to mark some parts of your code as file private or private in order to hide their implementation details from other code within the app's module. Access levels for frameworks. When you develop a framework, mark the public facing interface to that framework as open or public so that it can be viewed and accessed by other modules, such as an app that imports the framework. This public-facing interface is the Application Programming Interface, or API, for the framework. Note, any internal implementation details of your framework can still use the default access level of internal, or it can be marked as private or file private if you want to hide them from other parts of the framework's internal code. You need to mark an entity as open or public only if you want it to become part of your framework's API. Access levels for unit test targets. When you write an app with a unit test target, the code in your app needs to be made available to that module in order to be tested. By default, only entities marked as open or public are accessible to other modules. However, a unit test target can access any internal entity if you mark the import declaration for a product module with the testable attribute and compile that product module with testing enabled. Access control syntax. Define the access level for an entity by placing one of the open, public, internal, file private, or private modifiers at the beginning of the entity's declaration. Unless otherwise specified, the default access level is internal as specified in default access levels. This means that some internal class and some internal constant can be written without an explicit access level modifier and will still have an access level of internal. Custom types. If you want to specify an explicit access level for a custom type, do so at the point that you define the type. The new type can then be used wherever its access level permits. For example, if you define a file private class, that class can only be used as the type of a property or as a function parameter or return type in the source file in which the file private class is defined. The access control level of a type also affects the default access level of that type's members, its properties, methods, initializers, and subscripts. If you define a type's access level as private or file private, the default access level of its members will also be private or file private. If you define a type's access level as internal or public, or use the default access level of internal without specifying an access level explicitly, the default access level of the type's members will be internal. Important: A public type defaults to having internal members, not public members. If you want a type member to be public, you must explicitly mark it as such. This requirement ensures that the public-facing API for a type is something you opt into publishing and avoids presenting the internal workings of a type as public API by mistake. Tuple types. The access level for a tuple type is the most restrictive access level of all the types used in that tuple. For example, if you compose a tuple from two different types, one with internal access and one with private access, the access level for that compound tuple type will be private. Note, tuple types do not have a standalone definition in the way that classes, structures, enumerations, and functions do. A tuple's type's access level is determined automatically from the types that make up the tuple type and cannot be specified explicitly. Function types. The access level for a function type is calculated as the most restrictive access level of the function's parameter types and return type. You must specify the access level explicitly as part of the function's definition if the function's calculated access level does not match the contextual default. The example below defines a global function called sum function without providing a specific access level modifier for the function itself. You might expect this function to have a default access level of internal, but this is not the case. In fact, sum function will not compile as shown here. The function's return type 
is a tuple type composed from two of the custom classes defined above in custom types. One of these classes is defined as internal and the other is defined as private. Therefore, the overall access level of the compound tuple type is private, the minimum access level of the tuple's constituent types. Because the function's return type is private, you must mark the function's overall access level with the private modifier for the function to be valid. It is not valid to mark the definition of some function with the public or internal modifiers or to use the default setting of internal because public or internal users of the function might not have appropriate access to the private class used in the function's return type. Enumeration types. The individual cases of an enumeration automatically receive the same access level as the enumeration they belong to. You cannot specify a different access level for individual enumeration cases. In the example shown here, the compass point enumeration has an explicit access level of public. The enumeration cases north, south, east, and west therefore also have an access level of public. Raw values and associated values. The types used for any raw values or associated values in enumeration definition must have an access level at least as high as the enumeration's access level. For example, you cannot use a private type as the raw value type of an enumeration with an internal access level. Nested types. The access level of a nested type is the same as its containing type unless the containing type is public. Nested types defined within a public type have an automatic access level of internal. If you want a nested type within a public type to be publicly available, you must explicitly declare the nested type as public. Subclassing. You can subclass any class that can be accessed in the current access context and that is defined in the same module as the subclass. You can also subclass any open class that is defined in a different module. A subclass cannot have a higher access level than its superclass. For example, you cannot write a public subclass of an internal superclass. In addition, for classes that are defined in the same module, you can override any class member, method, property, initializer, or subscript that is visible in a certain access context. For classes that are defined in another module, you can override any open class member. An override can make an inherited class member more accessible than its superclass version. In the example here, class A is a public class with the file private method called some method. Class B is a subclass of A with the reduced access level of internal. Nonetheless, class B provides an override of some method with an access level of internal, which is higher than the original implementation of some method. It is even valid for a subclass member to call a superclass member that has lower access permissions than the subclass member as long as the call to the superclasses member takes place within an allowed access level context that is, within the same source file as the superclass for a file private member call, or within the same module as the superclass for an internal member call. Because superclass A and subclass B are defined in the same source file, it is valid for the B implementation of some method to call super.sum method. Constants, variables, properties, and subscripts. A constant, variable, or property cannot be more public than its type. It is not valid to write a public property with a private type, for example. Similarly, a subscript cannot be more public than either its index type or return type. If a constant, variable, property, or subscript makes use of a private type, the constant, variable, property, or subscript must also be marked as private. Getters and setters for constants, variables, properties, and subscripts automatically receive the same access level as the constant, variable, property, or subscript they belong to. You can give a setter a lower access level than its corresponding getter to restrict the read-write scope of that variable, property, or subscript. You assign a lower access level by writing file private set, private set, or internal set before the var or subscript introducer. Note, this rule applies to stored properties as well as computed properties. Even though you do not write an explicit getter and setter for a stored property, Swift still synthesizes an implicit getter and setter for you to provide access to the stored property's backing storage. Use file private set, private set, and internal set to change the access level of the synthesized setter in exactly the same way as for an explicit setter in a computed property. 
This example defines a structure called tract string, which keeps track of the number of times a string property is modified. The tract string structure defines a stored string property called value with an initial value of an empty string. The structure also defines a stored integer property called number of edits, which is used to track the number of times that value is modified. This modification tracking is implemented with the did set property observer on the value property, which increments number of edits every time the value property is set to a new value. The tracked string structure and the value property do not provide an explicit access level modifier, and so they both receive the default access level of internal. However, the access level for the number of edits property is marked with private set modifier to indicate that the property's getter still has a default access level of internal, but the property is settable only from within code that is part of the track string structure. This enables track string to modify the number of edits property internally, but to present the property as a read-only property when it is used outside the structure's definition. If you create a track string instance and modify its string value a few times, you can see the number of edits property value update to match the number of modifications. Although you can query the current value of the number of edits property from within another source file, you cannot modify the property from another source file. This restriction protects the implementation details of the track string edit tracking functionality while still providing convenient access to an aspect of that functionality. Note that you can assign an explicit access level for both a getter and a setter if required. This example shows a version of the track string structure in which the structure is defined with an explicit access level of public. The structure's members, including the number of edits property, therefore have an internal access level by default. You can make the structure's number of edits property getter public and its property setter private by combining the public and private set access level modifiers. Initializers. Custom initializers can be assigned an access level less than or equal to the type that they initialize. The only exception is for required initializers. A required initializer must have the same access level as the class it belongs to. As with function and method parameters, the types of an initializer's parameters cannot be more private than the initializer's own access level. Default initializers. Swift automatically provides a default initializer without any arguments for any structure or base class that provides default values for all of its properties and does not provide at least one initializer itself. A default initializer has the same access level as the type it initializes unless that type is defined as public. For a type that is defined as public, the default initializer is considered internal. If you want a public type to be initializable with a no argument initializer when used in another module, you must explicitly provide a public no argument initializer yourself as part of the type's definition. Default memberwise initializers for structure types. The default memberwise initializer for a structure type is considered private if any of the structure's stored properties are private. Likewise, if any of the structure's stored properties are file private, the initializer is file private. Otherwise, the initializer has an access level of internal. As with the default initializer above, if you want a public structure type to be initializable with a memberwise initializer when used in another module, you must provide a public memberwise initializer yourself as part of the type's definition. Protocols. If you want to assign an explicit access level to a protocol type, do so at the point you define the protocol. This enables you to create protocols that can only be adopted within a certain access context. The access level of each requirement within a protocol definition is automatically set to the same access level as the protocol. You cannot set a protocol requirement to a different access level than the protocol it supports. This ensures that all of the protocol's requirements will be visible on any type that adopts the protocol. Note. If you define a public protocol, the protocol's requirements require a public access level for those requirements when they are implemented. This behavior is different from other types where a public type definition implies an access level of internal for the type's members. Protocol inheritance. If you define a new protocol that inherits from an existing protocol, the new protocol can at most have the same access level as the protocol it inherits from. For example, you cannot write a public protocol that inherits from an internal protocol. Protocol conformance. A type can conform to a protocol with a lower access level than the type itself. For example, you can define a public type that can be used in other modules, 
but whose conformance to an internal protocol can only be used from within the internal protocol's defining module. The context in which a type conforms to a particular protocol is the minimum of the type's access level and the protocol's access level. For example, if a type is public, but a protocol it conforms to is internal, the type's conformance to that protocol is also internal. When you write or extend a type to conform to a protocol, you must ensure that the type's implementation of each protocol requirement has at least the same access level as the type's conformance to that protocol. For example, if a public type conforms to an internal protocol, the type's implementation of each protocol requirement must at least be internal. Note, in Swift, as in Objective-C, protocol conformance is global. It is not possible for a type to conform to a protocol in two different ways within the same program. Extensions. You can extend a class, structure, or enumeration in any access context in which the class, structure, or enumeration is available. Any type members added in an extension have the same default access level as type members declared in the original type being extended. If you extend a public or internal type, any new type members you add have a default access level of internal. If you extend a file private type, any new type members you add have a default access level of file private. If you extend a private type, any new type members you add have a default access level of private. Alternatively, you can mark an extension with an explicit access level modifier, for example, private, to set a new default access level for all members defined within the extension. This new default can still be overridden within the extension for individual type members. You cannot provide an explicit access level modifier for an extension if you are using that extension to add protocol conformance. Instead, the protocol's own access level is used to provide the default access level for each protocol requirement implementation within the extension. Private members and extensions. Extensions that are in the same file as the class, structure, or enumeration that they extend behave as if the code in the extension had been written as part of the original type's declaration. As a result, you can declare a private member in the original declaration and access that member from extensions in the same file, declare a private member in one extension and access that member from another extension in the same file, declare a private member in an extension and access that member from the original declaration in the same file. This behavior means you can use extensions in the same way to organize your code whether or not your types have private entities. For example, Given this simple protocol, you can use an extension to add protocol conformance like this. Generics. The access level for a generic type or generic function is the minimum of the access level of the generic type or function itself and the access level of any type constraints on its type parameters. Type aliases. Any type aliases you define are treated as distinct types for the purposes of access control. A type alias can have an access level less than or equal to the access level of the type it aliases. For example, a private type alias can alias a private, file private, internal, public, or open type, but a public type alias cannot alias an internal, file private, or private type. Note, this rule also applies to type aliases for associated types used to satisfy protocol conformances.